Hey guys, hope you're doing well. Today I want to talk about ball python genetics. It's one of the things that got me interested in this hobby. So get ready, let's dive in. Let's consider albinos, like this guy here. The albino is a recessive gene. That means in order for a snake to look like this, it has to have two albino genes. One comes from the father, the other one comes from the mother. Let's pretend we breed this albino guy with a female that doesn't have an albino gene. And we want to find out the chances of producing a baby albino. One way to find out is to use Punnett squares. Let me show you how that works. All right, so we represent the albino gene as an A. The snake I just showed you has two A's, and we know that because we can visually see he is an albino. He got one A from his father and one from the mother. We're going to breed him to a female that doesn't have any A genes at all. So we'll represent the lack of A as the N letter. N will stand for normal. Since genes has to come in pairs, her gene is depicted as NN. Now let's put what we know to work in the Punnett square. We simply create a 2x2 two two grid and put on top the A's for the male or the father and N's on the left for the female or the mother. Next we need to factor the letters from top down and from left to right. So let's do that now. Okay, so now that we've completed the Punnett square, we need to decipher the re what the results mean. Let me explain. Each of the four quadrants represents 25 of the possible outcomes of offspring offsprings. In this instance, we have four quadrants of NA. So we automatically know that no matter what, if we breed an albino with a normal, we always get NA. But let's calculate why we know that. Each NA represents 25 of the outcomes. So this NA represents 25% and 25%, 25%, 25%. And we can show that here. Now we just have to combine the percentages of the same gene since they're all NA. We just have to add up all these percentages and we end up with 100%. That means the offsprings have 100% chance of receiving a N from the female and an A from the male. So now let's find out what the NA combination of genes will actually look like. We know that an albino needs to have two A's, like the male that we saw, and a normal is two N's. Well, the NA is neither, but we know that the N is a dominant gene. It's dominant over the A. That means N in the NA overpowers the A, and that the lone A cannot visually change the appearance of the snake. Therefore, the snake looks just like a normal. Essentially, the visual appearance of a NN and the NA is the same. If I show you an NN snake along a NA snake, you will not see any indication that one of them has the A gene. This is a good time to introduce a couple new terms. When an animal has two of the same gene, we call that homozygous. The prefix homo, don't laugh, means of the same. Example of homozygous is the AA father and the NN mother because they both carry two copies of the same gene. When an animal has mismatch of genes such as the NA, we call that heterozygous. The prefix hetero means of a mixture. In this hobby, we sometimes say het 
as a short, shortened term for heterozygous. Now that we know we can't produce any ball pythons in this pairing, let's consider what adult pythons we should breed together to get albino babies. Since we know an albino needs an A from each parent, we should pick adults that carry at least one A. Here are the possibilities. Here are the possible adult pairings that can produce albino babies. So we have albino to albino, albino to a het albino, het albino to an albino, and a het albino to a het albino. So those are the possible pairings. Let's put all these into the Punnett square and see what we can get. So in the case of a albino bred to another albino, meaning an AA animal bred to another AA animal, we can confidently guess that we will be successful at getting mostly albino babies. Well, it turns out we can expect all of the babies to be albino. Here's how we can calculate the results. Remember, each quadrant represents 25 of the offspring population. So, each one of these represents 25%. So we have A, A, 25%. So now all we have to do is combine the percentages of the genes and we get 100%. That means all of the offsprings will carry the AA gene, meaning they will all be visual albinos. In the next two cases where we breed an albino to a head albino, in both cases we get the same result. So as you can see, order does not matter. What matters is the percentages. So combining the percentages of the like genes, we get 50% albinos and 50% head albinos. That means out of a clutch of four babies, the odds are that two of them are albino and the other two are normal in appearance but het for albino because they carry one albino gene. The last case, we breed a head albino to a head albino. And as you can see, the chances of getting an albino is 25%. The chance of getting a completely normal animal is 25%, and the chance of getting het albinos is 50%. That means out of a clutch of four babies, the odds of getting an albino is one in four. The other three will look normal, and you will have no idea which of those normals carry the albino gene. So that's it for the albino gene. If you find this helpful, please give it a like. And in the next video, we will be building upon what we just learned and introduce the piebald gene into our breeding scenarios. If you want to be notified, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.